and makeup for this episode of the Big Fat Panda Show is provided by no one. When budget matters, you hire no one. You're just a big, fat panda. I'm not a big, fat panda. I'm the big, fat panda. Skadoosh. Welcome to the Big Fat Panda Show number five. Let's get right into it and talk about Frozen. No, not the movie. Uh, Florida today. Last night was 35 degrees. So for those of you that think that Florida is always sunny and hot, it was not last night. It was, I will repeat, 35 degrees. There are no basements. The houses are built on slabs. Do you know how cold the tile is at 35 degrees? But I digress. I don't mean to start off complaining. It is, after all, my favorite time of the year, Christmas time. Let me try to say that <clears throat> more manly. It's Christmas time, my favorite time of the year. But really it is. Everything is transformed and you get into the spirit immediately. So let's head right on over to the Magic Kingdom Park. Before the parade, my favorite parade, they have something called the Kringle Crew. Usually, I don't like it so much. This year, it was great. I was at the top of the train station with Honesty from Temporary Tourist and Jeff and Denise Lang from Mount Steps. We had a great view and we were just loving it. I was holding the seats basically and like the table and I was constantly being brought hot cocoa and cookies which this year were incredible. And the hot cocoa, it's not like weak hot cocoa you'd expect for free. It is delicious, creamy, chocolatey hot cocoa. So New Fantasyland got new decorations, including Beast's Castle. I do not have photos of that. There will be videos coming out on BigFatPanda.com, and I will have them for the next show. They also transformed the Jungle Cruise into Jingle Cruise. And yes, I was disappointed. Look at the poster for this attraction. That poster sets up some expectations, don't you agree? I mean, a hippo or an elephant has to have a Santa hat on, yes? But no, like they decorated the boats and the queue, but nothing in the ride at all. They could have sent me out to Michael's craft store with a hundred bucks, I would have had the whole thing done. It would have been beautiful. So I made a PandaVision video of Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Parade. It is one of my most favorite videos that I've made. I'm gonna just give you a quick clip. <laughs> Christmas for just a second. Did you see they announced the Polar Coaster? It's supposed to be somewhere in Florida, the world's tallest roller coaster. I communicated with US Thrill Rides, the builder, around December 15th, they will be releasing where in Florida this is to be built. I'll be covering it, but you won't see me on it. 525 feet in the air. Think about that for a second. That's like Tower of Terror, another Tower of Terror on top of Tower of Terror, another half of that Tower of Terror on top of the Tower of Terror on top of that Tower of Terror, and then just let's add 25 feet. Enjoy yourself. That's crazy. And that's not like the stratosphere in Vegas where it's just a big roller coaster on top of this tall building. This coaster is going up and down the 525 feet. So I posed a question to my Facebook friends again and asked, what is your favorite part of Christmas here in Central Florida and why? Here were the responses. Maria Perez says without a doubt, her favorite is Epcot and going around the country is hearing the different Santas tell similar but different stories about the holiday. I haven't done that. I think that's pretty interesting. Erica Moore says Jingle Eve at Ivanhoe Village. Michael Sunbriar decided not to answer the question, but to let me know that Floridians are totally obsessed with snow and they can put fake snow everywhere. This is a true observation. Tim Devine says the candlelight processional. I do have to get there this year. That is a very touching uh, presentation. 
Robert Bearden says the SeaWorld Christmas Celebration. A lot of people actually love the SeaWorld Christmas Celebration. Beatrice Feeney, like me, says Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. She especially loves the toy soldiers, the reindeer, and the snowmen. Speaking of the toy soldiers, I'm sorry, that is my favorite part. Let's, let's take a, can we just take a break for the toy soldiers? <laughs> Lions loves to take a group, a reunion group, to see the Osborne Lights. Keith Barrett and Honesty Jansen both say the snowfall in downtown celebration. Uh, apparently they all love celebration at Christmas. Now this year, more than ever, it seems that the hotels are all getting something very unique in their decorations. Like the Grand Floridian has their gingerbread house, the Contemporary has their gingerbread tree. <laughs> still have to get over to the Boardwalk and Beach Club area. I do want to mention a passionate group of people that I'm involved with, V24 Radio. These people really do it right. They have an intense passion for everything theme park in Central Florida. Their station is full of music that brings back those memories of being in the theme park. We also do a live weekly show called ADR, a Disney Roundtable. When I can, I'm usually on it blabbing about something. Anyone that watched show number three and saw Steve Barrett Hidden Mickey guy, he revealed that his favorite Hidden Mickey is a Hidden Mickey that really only comes once a year on Mickey's birthday, which I believe was November 18th. It's at the new Little Mermaid attraction in New Fantasyland. Take a look at these pictures thanks to Marilyn and Mark Lyons. On Mickey's birthday, the light shines ever so perfectly to create a Hidden Mickey from the shapes at the top of the cave grotto. It's pretty amazing. I'm sure that you could catch it like other days close to that day, but apparently it completely goes away in a week or so. So let's just talk about another Orlando Christmas extravaganza, the Gaylord Palms Resort in Kissimmee. This amazing resort hotel features an annual celebration called ICE. Basically for ICE, a bunch of artisans from China come and carve ICE, and you walk around a nine degree convention hall, uh, all themed up with ICE. This year, the theme was the classic Frosty the Snowman, the one that puts the hat on and goes, Happy Birthday! My heart was so warm for it, it's amazing the ice didn't melt as I passed by. I had the opportunity to stay there for a night, and I just want you to take a look at the room. This is a standard room, and really it was done up very nicely. I especially like the bathroom, that the shower wasn't a tub, that, you know, who takes a bath on vacation? I, I mean, maybe people do. I'm sorry to assume that you don't, but I liked just having a nice luxury shower and the view outside the window, oh, it was great. It's really a destination onto itself. And at night, it just screams Christmas. Do any of you like Hallmark? This is not a ploy to sell anything. I bought these on my own, discovered them on my own. Nobody sent them to me. I went to Hallmark and I saw these uh, Disney figures with instruments. But what's great is when you press on one of them, you actually hear that particular instrument being played. And if it's near the other ones, they play the same song in their instruments. I still have to get Daisy and a Black Friday Mickey Mouse gets released. I can't wait to hear all five of them together. It's really pretty cool, I love it. These are $15.95 each. I think you can use a $5 coupon towards them. I can buy a lot of expensive junk. This was worth every penny. And let's briefly touch on Frozen. This movie surprised me in many ways. I am not going to give away any spoilers. Try to read less about it if possible and just go see it. I thought the animation was breathtaking to say the least. Characters were engaging. The songs were funny and moved the story along. Olaf the snowman hysterical voiced by Josh Gad. I can always tell how much I liked a movie by how much I think about it the next day. And I'm still thinking about Frozen. I have to go see it again. I'd also like to tell you about Ayapa. No, it's not a disease I came down with. It's the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions. Whew, I got it. I had no idea all this fun was going on without me. This was the first time I went to an IAPA convention. It was a lot of fun. Basically, people who buy attractions and ideas for theme parks are walking around looking at their next new attraction. There were simulators and roller coasters indoors. 
uh, all kinds of food and things to try and do. I was with Robert Bearden, Ed Bearden, his brother, and Jeremiah Good of windowtothemagic.com. We had so much fun. We couldn't even see it all in, in the one day that we were there. I mean, you had to go for like three days. Next year, I will definitely go for more days. And I am an audio animatronics fan, so I loved all the things that I saw just seeing like different, you know, audio animatronics. Take a look at some of these. Clear the decks, you swabs. Take a look at the spinning coaster. Now, I don't think that they're trying to sell this exact one. I think this is a sample of what could be done. We also visited a really great booth called popnoggins.com. Pop Noggins does a whole bunch of different novelty items. One of them is selling green screen technology, sort of that's used here for the show, to put people's heads on top of dancing bodies. Now, for copyright reasons, I had to mash up the song a little bit, but here is Rob, Ed, myself, and Jeremiah dancing to Baby Got Back. It's really pretty funny. The winner of last month's unbirthday button is Jennifer Peel. Congratulations, Jennifer. And the winner of last month's Vinylmation is Mariah Does Disney. I've contacted both of you to send me your address so I can get these out to you. While I'm filming this right now, I have absolutely no idea what this month's prize will be. So, it will appear on the screen behind me because while I'm editing, I will have figured it out. So, I'm gonna just move. Cool, did you see the prize? Well, that's what it is. In order to be eligible for this month's prize, all I need you to do is put a comment at the bottom of this YouTube video or send me an email if you're watching us through iTunes. And at the end of your comment, just mention WDW Clicks, which is the new show from my guest coming up soon, Mr. Kevin Yee. And now a quick word from our sponsor. The Big Fat Panda Show is sponsored by Mouse Planning. Disney vacation planning for people who prefer their Walt Disney World vacations to be practically perfect in every way. Let the mouse planner do the planning so you can focus on having fun. Visit mouseplanning.com today for a no obligation quote on your next visit to Walt Disney World. Mr. Kevin Yee. Kevin, I'm gonna give you the hug. How are you doing, man? Doing great, how are you? Good, guy. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing that, the way I, I know you is from photo finds. I happened upon it one day, I clicked on it, and I was like, you know, what is this? This is all just photos. But it was so interesting to me because of the detail, the things that you saw that I never would have saw. Does that come natural to you? I think it has, over time, turned into something that comes naturally, yeah. yeah. I don't think it was there when I first moved to Florida 10 years ago, but uh, but over time now, it's hard to go into the parks and not notice the stuff that's new. My kids do it, too. I think, I mean, like, everybody who goes to Disney says that we love the detail, and I say I love the detail, but, like, when you notice the record in the Spaceship Earth, in the, was it the family scene? The, yeah, the family watching the moon, la moon landing, right? I would never know that the record changed. Apparently it's changed more than once, actually. <laughs> From Beatles to, uh, the, I, don't, I think it was Swiss Family Treehouse or Swiss Family Robinson, and then uh, now it's Lady in the Tramp or something, or maybe it's vice versa, but it and does move And then the, the Pixar lamp, again, in the, what is that, that's the garage scene? That's the garage scene, the very next scene, or two scenes forward. I just never noticed, and I feel kind of silly that I would never 
That particular one has actually probably been there for a long time, maybe even since the refurbishment, and um, I've never noticed it either. So, the, you know, what I like to do, when you, when you live here and you go on the rides over and over again, and you know, maybe it's every weekend for 10 years, eventually you start looking the other direction of where you're supposed to be looking. Yeah, true. Um, and, and that's when you sometimes make these discoveries, like the, like the Pixar lamp at, just before the, uh, the top of the world scene with all the stars. Um, and, and so that could have been there all this time, I just didn't notice. And so, you know, I've, I've had to start saying things like, this is new to me, right, just whether it's new or not. Right, yeah. right. <clears throat> Did you get to go to the uh, Very Merry Christmas party yet? Not yet, not this year. Okay, you know about the, uh, I, I, again, I didn't notice this, this was Jeff Lang that pointed it out to me, was the, uh, the reindeers. Oh, that the reindeers are from Disneyland rather than from Disney World. I wonder if our costumes were just getting old. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what made them say, let's, this is, we have this in the budget to have all new reindeers. It's the sort of thing that I think the, the everyday visitor is not picking up on. They, they don't recognize the reindeers are different from what they were last time. And yet, it's not wasted money for Disney to do this. Because what happens is those same everyday customers show up, they watch the parade, and they walk away feeling like, wow, that was fresh and new and interesting, and it's a good thing I come every year because you know I must get sick of it over those 11 months that I don't see it. They don't recognize that the parade probably has been freshened up. Okay, so for people that might now be missing you on photo finds, you've now taken photo finds and made WDW clicks. Yep, uh, so obviously meant to be read as Walt Disney World clicks. Walt Disney World clicks. Uh, but yes, it's spelled WDW clicks. Uh, and the idea there was, I, I wanted to do the same thing as photo finds, but um, kind of under my own uh, under my own banner. So I opened my own shop. Is really all that is. It's, it's meant to be kind of the same show. Given the name, though, I think this one's not going to be all Orlando. Um, so. Maybe later I'll branch out to put some more Universal and SeaWorld back in it. But uh, given the name, I should probably be Disney focused for a while. Cool. It holds my interest for the whole show. Well, that's good. And sometimes I hear people, they have a seven minute interest and they're gone. So with this show, what is some of them are like 15, 20 minutes? Some of them are 15 or 20. Some of them are seven or nine minutes, right? There's not that much to point out that week. But uh, it really is just a collection of, and it's not comprehensive. It's where I went that weekend. Right. Right. So this particular weekend, I'm going to be in, you know, probably Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom won't be any Epcot updates. It's not meant to be everything happening around the parks right, right. this weekend. It's just where I went and this is what I saw that was new. And there's, there's so much stuff that's always new. It's shocking to me. There's something about the way you do it, and I'm not just throwing out compliments, but there is. There's something about the way you do it, the way you speak, that it holds your interest and gives you that detail. I've, I put it up yesterday on Facebook and I'll do that again. WDW Clicks. What is the website, uh, what is the YouTube channel name? I believe that um, I renamed the channel actually WDW Clicks. So I do know that if you search for it, you'll be able to find WDW okay, Clicks. I will definitely easy. have a link at the end of the show for whoever wants to subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't like the new Google Plus uh, commenting thing. I've went to reply to people on YouTube and it says I'm not allowed to. And it's like, okay, that's my video. You've, res you've responded, I I'm not allowed to reply to you. So Because you have I to tried. have a Plus account, yeah. But I have the Plus account. For some reason that person just said, I guess replies are not. So you have Plus, did you make your reservation six months in advance? It's like an ADR. <laughs> <laughs> I, I respond to almost everyone, but there's some people it just Google Plus doesn't allow you to respond to. So apart from uh, WW Clicks, I know that you are an avid uh, author. I am, yeah. How many books have you published? I think it's something like 12 or 13 or 14. A couple of them are now off the market. Um, one of them, scandalous, scandalous. One of them just, um, just didn't sell, uh, and that was more like a kid's choose your own adventure book. Um, oh my God, I love those. And, um, and the other one uh, was uh, made obsolete by the internet. And so that was a, a menu book for Walt Disney okay, World. Wait, why would the uh, choose your own adventure not sell? I remember those, the turn to page 34 if you go right. You know, what I did is I made uh, an executive decision early on that it was not gonna be a super long book. It was gonna be aimed at particularly young kids. And I also made the executive decision it was gonna be a hardcover book and printed in color, which bumped up the price. Okay. So, and, and this was before I was doing kind of print on demand, the sort of internal to Amazon stuff. They print it when you order the book. That's what I do now. But, but this was when I was receiving them into the garage, basically, and sending them out again from there. And so, um, after a while, it, it, once the Amazon stuff makes it easy to take care of itself, I don't want to be in the business of packing things up and running into the post office anymore. And so, um, I, it's all really an excuse. The real answer is that Toontown closed, and Toontown was... <laughs> Toontown was a part of the... I um, bought the original answer. Yeah. <laughs> Your Day in the Magic Kingdom, it was called. And, and it, was, it was great, and it had a, a several different plot lines, um, but it, it did revolve around um, Mickey's Toontown Fair. You're going to have people ask you about it now. You know? 
Yeah, I know. That's fine. I still the, the garage is still there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, show me the most popular books right now. So uh, actually, what I brought here is um, the older version. This is the print older version of what you can see behind you. So the um, the yeah, uh, I'm gonna put a, pic a big picture up, but just so that we have this. Right. So the um, the book originally started as 101 Things You Never Knew About Walt Disney World. It was named after something I did at Disneyland. 101 Things. Um, and it now carries the title, um, Walt Disney World Hidden History. So uh, what, what we've brought here is a slightly older edition. Um, and what it does is it goes through the parks, a little bit on the resorts, uh, but mostly through the parks, explaining um, things you can point at today that uh, are remnants of older rides or tributes to Imagineers. So basically all the inside jokes in the parks, all the hidden wow, history okay. stuff. Uh, just one that I came across, the Pirates of the Caribbean. When you look into the, uh, the area with the two skeletons and they're playing chess, the chessboard sitting between two skeletons in the queue was originally laid out with the chess pieces locked in a stalemate, with the joke being that the players sat for so long seeking a way out they died on the spot and became skeletons. See, I, I just wouldn't know that, so this interests me, this is good. Yeah, that particular one you will find in some other books. Many of them you're not going to. So okay. a minute ago you were flipping by just... the, the, the Mike Fink um, uh, Keelboat, which is stuck over in the, um, the Wilson's Cave Inn. Well, that, in particular, is a reference to an actual place um, where they used to have river pirates. And so, you know, they've um, they've taken the need to be authentic to some crazy extremes sometimes. Very cool. Most of the stuff that gets me are the are the tributes. So, like the Luxor lamp you mentioned earlier, uh, obviously a tribute to um, to the the Apple people and the Pixar people. Sorry, not the Apple. Whatever people. happened to the animated one that I saw on video <clears> in? The studios. In Hollywood Seats opposite Pixar, opposite um, Toy Story Mania on Pixar Place, that one is still behind those doors and it's not coming back out. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to get to work and I think they've stopped trying to make it work. He's brought me a lot of books I see here, so we're going to have some prizes too to give away some of these books. So this book uh, you're looking at here is something of a collector's item in that it's the original cover and it's got an extra chapter in it. So this is the preview version of a book called Mousetrap. So the book uh, you can buy on Amazon has got a, a completely different cover. It's it's the cover of uh, the old Disneyland admission sign. But sites. this one is special. But this one, uh, they only printed uh, like 100 of these, of the preview editions. Uh, and it includes sort of like the day in the life of, um, of my life as a, as a working lead. So oh, that's right, you were a cast member at Disneyland. I was a cast member at Disneyland and that's what the subtitle is. It's a memoir of a Disneyland cast member from 87 through 2002. Uh, I worked mostly in restaurants, some special events, and then uh, by the end, I was working in a, a division called Entertainment Art. And what they did is they installed temporary stuff around the parks. So they wore this sort of nondescript black gray uniform and went everywhere and behind the scenes and on top of roof lines. Uh, and then they also helped um, craft some of those things that would go temporarily into the parks, like <clears throat> Haunted Mansion Holiday. So I worked on Haunted Mansion Holiday just a little bit, doing uh, either some of these bones and some of these burned up wreath decorations and, and those sorts of things, pumpkins and those sorts of things. And then we helped install Putting them. Putting them up? The song you were no, installing? No, no I, also, I also created them in many cases. Awesome. I spent many afternoons painting, I'm not painting, gluing white feathers under this black feather boa <clears throat> that once it was installed in the ballroom scene of Haunted Mansion there, you couldn't see the white at all. So, uh, And that is my name coming from the snake scroll um, in the attic scene. So there's all these names of the people from that division. And Kevin Yee is and, on there. Well, it's Kevin. It doesn't say Kevin okay. Yee, but it's close to the bottom near the floor. And that, that is me because they, they came by one day and asked me I want to be And every time eyes. they say John, it's, it's me. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I... <laughs> so this is the story of what it was like to, to work at Disney, what it was like to be there on 9-11 um, when the park was entirely wow. closed. You know, there's a picture on the back of, you know, what an empty park looks like um, when there's no one there and it's the middle of the day. Um, it was, was that a weird... That was a weird day. An extremely weird day, yeah. You had felt, to still be happy and smiley, the cast members. Well, on 9-11, the park never opened. Okay. Disneyland uh, got word early enough that they never opened the gates okay. that day. But, but I went in as a cast member and took pictures and uh, it felt like you were communing with Walt. It was you in the park. Okay, and we got other books here? I, I have two other books. One I'll mention quickly and then one I'll dwell on a little bit more. The more recent one is actually not a Disney book so much as, as it's about Disney fairy tale. So this is a, a book about um, 
uh, the Grimm stories as they were originally, not the ones you can buy anywhere else. I speak German and I translated the original, very original version of the Grimm stories. This is not translated in English anywhere else. And then I end up comparing them both to the later Grimm's and then also to what happens in the Disney movies. And so, very interesting. And so when you look at the, the Disney movies, um, it means something completely different from what it meant uh, in the original version. Robert Bearden said you just either taught a class on this or went to some sort of a meeting on this? I teach um, classes on fairy tales and uh, one of the ones I did in August was a, a massive open online course, a MOOC they're called. Uh, it was basically it's open to the public. It's, it's a college level class open to the public. It was on fairy tales and that's, uh, that's similar awesome. to that topic. So the other books I have here, um, a couple of years worth of um, the yearbook, Walt Disney World yearbook. And so you can see by uh, looking in them, these are um, meant to be kind of like a yearbook for the theme parks. So what changed, what was added, what was deleted uh, in the theme park that year. And so, um, you know, when there's a, a new thing oh, open. This is full of photos. It's, this it's, is full of photos. It's mostly just photos, yeah. So it's, it's awesome. light on the text. It shows uh, pictures of, you, a moment ago you were on Apricot Lane at Downtown I Disney. And so there are, you know, 12 pictures or something of Apricot Lane. Uh, which is great to look back on someday when they close Apricot Lane like they just did. And when something is brand new, I make a sort of more bigger photo spread out of it. So you're flipping through the 2011 version, there's a lot about the Haunted Mansion expansion to the queue and so forth in 2011. I capture a Saturday in July um, for posterity's sake basically to see what's closed and there's some set of prices. Uh, you'll see what oh, typical cool. prices look like throughout the year. Um, there are more people writing about the theme parks, writing about their experiences in the theme parks and I'm all for that. You know, I wrote a cast member book. I want to see other cast member books. Good, awesome. I, uh, I noticed the cast member camaraderie is pretty big down here, like over at the, the, uh, the Jungle Cruise. Mm -hmm. I filmed it and then the people just all got together on Facebook and I knew all of them all of a sudden. Was Disneyland like that? Was there a camaraderie, especially because it's smaller? Yeah, uh, um, and it was longer term, you know. Uh, okay. there's, there's less of a footprint for a college program, but they stay there longer. Um, and especially when I, I first got there in 87 and in 1987 uh, you know it wasn't that many years before where the parks had been run just like Walt Disney so they hadn't really had that corporate feel to any of the parks yet at all and so there were people working in locations who'd been there for 20 years 30 years and you don't see much of that here down at Disney World right the um, turnover is more the different. turnover is higher and, and they're more dependent on the international and the college program uh, cast members do you still keep in around. contact with anyone from Disneyland absolutely yeah see, in fact we had a we had a Cafe Orleans reunion just uh, last summer, I believe it was, and so. You know, over there or over here? Over there, so, okay. you know, people come together and just exchange old stories and uh, and look at old pictures. Very cool, I've never been, I have to go visit Disneyland. Everybody says it's uh, there's something different. Oh yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you write for Mice Chat? I write for Mice Chat. I have my own banner under uh, Ultimate Orlando, is, is the name of that okay. blog that I write for, but I also write for Mice Chat once a week. And uh, I, I don't think I'd be overstepping the bounds to say sometimes you write things that people think and don't want to say, and it stirs the pot a little bit and gets some people either very passionate or annoyed. Yeah, I've been accused before of stirring the pot intentionally. You know that uh, that that the the reason for doing it is to get the clicks and you know to to be to get noticed and so forth. And that's not the case. Uh, you know, I've I've got a long history of writing about Disney even before these uh, these books. You know, I was um, around 1995. In those days, you know, sometimes it, maybe it's still true now. Sometimes the level of discourse people have about the parks is pretty low. You know, okay. it's small world. I love that ride. Or small world can't get over that song and. You know, no one's really having um, an in-depth discussion about... Well, that what, animatronic hasn't worked in a long time on the right-hand side. Or, or even just more thoughtful stuff like, you know, what, what uh, Adventureland is supposed to be exotic, right? Well, exotic for whom? Exotic, actually, it turns out exotic for the white male Protestant who grew up in America. These are the exotic things for them. If you come from other parts of the world, it's not exotic. You're supposed to discuss those things, and I think stirring the pot a little bit is your responsibility. Otherwise, who wants to read the same stuff over and over? I, I try to call it as I see it, and it's not that I'm automatically negative, um, and it's not that I go around the parks with my camera looking for things that are broken or you know things that are too dirty that they're not cleaning up. It's not like that. I go and I have a great time. I enjoy the parks with my family. You know, we go on the rides. Yeah, I, you're always. I always see that. Enjoying and then, and then, you know, if if you come across something that has been broken, I don't even necessarily do anything about it. Then I might take a picture and then look at it again in three weeks. Is it still broken? Okay. Now that might be a moment then when I would speak up because part of my philosophy here is that if we as customers never say anything, that's kind of like tacit approval to the management 
Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Well, I know when for the holidays they got rid of the uh, the bear jam the country bear jamboree Christmas. Mm -hmm. Now I see so many things that they're adding for Christmas, and I'm like, what? Are they going to bring that back? They're they're looking to add entertainment back to the Diamond Horseshoe, which to me says something something's happening with to be good. So yes, when sometimes I definitely see a decline, and then I see it, other things starting to come back, and I don't know if there's a balance with the people going to get services or what? Well, the hard part to put your finger on is that things are cyclical anyway. Managers are cyclical and the top management has changed out since uh, the Country Bear Jamboree has left here. We've got completely different top management at Walt Disney World. So maybe this move toward more um, holiday offerings, more entertainment offerings is coming from the management rather than necessarily coming from uh, you know, the, the, the guest demand, so to speak. Uh, really, I'm, I'm, as a former working lead, you know, it's the person in charge of show quality standards, basically on the spot in, you in the those parks. Things, sure. I notice those things, and when something isn't working, it, it kind of sticks in my craw. And so I don't all, all automatically go tell the internet, hey, this is broken. I might go tell the cast members, did you know that Rare Fox's jaw is hanging open? And, yeah. You know, and, and they say yes. And I say, great, you know, and then I, I go and enjoy my day. If it's still broken four weeks later, it's probably not the cast member's fault, it might be. It's probably more like the budget's fault, which makes it management's fault. And so, yeah, if, if people aren't complaining about that in columns like mine and others, the management has tacit approval. Let's just keep saving money because nobody cares. What's in it for me, it's actually quite a dovetail with what I do with both, you know, the earbook as well as the, the clicks show, is that the, the magic is always in the details. I agree. You know, you can have a fantastic um, ride experience, you know, where you're, you're going down hills and, you know, negative g-forces and all that stuff, but if there's not much interesting to look at, well then it's a Six Flags attraction. Um, is there some magical moment in which, you know, Joe Q Public notices finally that the animatronics are broken and this place looks run down? I think us locals who go so much obviously notice it quicker. We see it faster and that's sure. natural and, and I'm not trying to suggest that uh, they need to fix everything instantaneously, but they do need to live by the standards they created the all those, all those years show? and decades ago. Right, so Walt had a certain idea in mind in 55. By the time I got there in 87, they were still kind of holding themselves to that standard. And it's that standard that has started to slip. It's the whole thing. Imagine if the gigantic, wonderful Yeti thing stopped working. You, you would, oh. Would that, I, that's a big problem. Did I say the wrong thing? I'm it's sorry. It's a big problem. I, I, I love, okay. I remember the Yeti, clearly. And it moved a lot and you noticed it. Yep. And it swooped its hand down. No matter how much I knew it was fake, I would duck. And it was growling and moving and now nobody remembers that. They think it's fine to stand still in the corner. I say, and again, that's I'm a local, I understand. I say shut it down for months if you have to. Open the mountain, dissect it with a chainsaw and fix that thing or put a new one in but I understand a lot of people don't. Well, it, that, all joking aside, that particular one I think is not as bad as the mermaid on her side yeah, and, for and the, yeah. blinking, blinking and so forth. I so, agree. so if we had Avatar Land and Australia and you know all sorts of new stuff added and took the pressure off Everest, we might actually see it go down. This is a guess, no one's told me this. I, I think that the guests really don't mind the Yeti. They don't remember it, they, they like how it is. Yeah. They see it for a quick second, they're fine with it. Right. So I think they're gonna keep that the way it is. Yeah. It's our new normal. It's the new normal. Okay, so give me all the places on the internet that we can find you and follow you. So um, probably most visible on Mice Chat, uh, where you can see kind of a weekly update that's on, on Tuesdays. Uh, WW Clicks is a YouTube show. It's also linked and embedded from within Mice Chat, so you can watch it that way. Okay. My own blog is Ultimate Orlando, ultimateorlando.com or .blogspot.com, it's the same place. Um, on Twitter, you can get me at Alt Orlando, that's the username. Uh, on Facebook, it's my own name, Kevin Yi, and um, there's also a, a you know a page for Ultimate Orlando you can follow on, on uh, Facebook as well. Awesome! Thank you very much, sir. You're very welcome. I Thanks for having your me. Time. Thank you. And there you have it, show number five. I will be working on some skits for next month's show. Hopefully, things will have quieted down a little bit. There is so much to cover. So many new things coming out. So many new things happening right now. I'm filming this on Thanksgiving Day, so I'm feeling a little mushy and telling you how thankful I am that you've accepted me into your home, your iPhone, your iPad, wherever you watch this. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Go out there, create pandemonium, have fun, and above all, like I always say, give out some big panda hugs. It makes a world of difference. Until the end of December, panda out.